McLaren has a tyre advantage that's baffling the paddock. While other teams watch their tyres overheat and performance drop off, McLaren somehow keep their rubber in the perfect operating window lap after lap. Red Bull suspects water cooling. They reportedly have thermal images showing cold spots on McLaren's brake drums, to which McLaren basically said, protest us. But what's their secret? Well, the answer might lie in something called phase change materials. And to find out more, I spoke with Martin Butchen, who was an F1 engineer and wrote his thesis at McLaren about this exact technology eight years ago. What immediately came into my mind was phase change technology because I wrote my thesis about this. And this is exactly what phase change materials are doing. He's going to explain exactly what this technology is and how McLaren might be using it to dominate so far this year. So, as you know, Formula 1 tyres have a very narrow operating window, a specific temperature range where they give maximum grip. So the dream scenario would be to bring the tyres up to their optimal temperature as quickly as possible and then to keep that optimal temperature until the end of the race, until the end of the lap during qualifying. That's the ideal scenario that you're trying to do. If you're below that window, you won't have much grip. If you're above it, you're sliding around and chewing through your rubber. And that sliding around generates even more heat, creating a vicious cycle of degradation. Basically, the tyres are getting worse. Most teams on the grid, Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, can get their tyres up to temperature quickly, which is why they're pretty competitive in qualifying. But during a race, they struggle with overheating, especially in hot conditions or on abrasive circuits. This is where McLaren has found their edge. Their cars keep good tyre temperature lap after lap, allowing them to push consistently while others have to manage the degradation. As Toto Wolff admitted, McLaren have demonstrated their superiority on every tyre type. We have a similarly fast car to them, but only on one lap. McLaren can reproduce that every lap. So how are they doing it? Well, that's what we're here to find out. The paddock has many theories about McLaren's advantage. Red Bull, in particular, has been vocal about their suspicions. According to reports, they claim to have thermal imaging evidence showing cold spots on McLaren's rear brake drums while rivals' drum brakes burned orange and red under similar conditions. Christian Horner went as far as suggesting they had proof McLaren was using some form of water cooling, which would be a pretty significant accusation. And McLaren's response was classic F1 politics. Andrea Stella challenged Red Bull to protest them and put their evidence on the table. And we all saw that Zach Brown appeared on the pit wall in Miami with a water bottle labelled tyre water, trolling the competition and making it clear he wasn't taking these allegations seriously. So what are the teams normally doing to manage their tyre temperature? Well, as you probably know, F1 brakes generate enormous heat. They can reach over 1000 degrees Celsius during heavy braking. This heat then transfers through the wheel assembly into the wheel rim and consequently into the tyre itself, significantly affecting both tyre temperature and pressure. Now, brake ducts do channel air to cool the brake discs and calipers, while a different path cools the wheel drums, which are close to the rim and therefore affect the tyre temperature. And one theory that's gained traction is that McLaren might be using a reversible airflow system. Now, imagine this. During tyre warm-up, hot air from the brakes is directed to the wheel drums to heat the tyres quickly. Then, once at the right temperature, the airflow is reversed, with cool air hitting the drums first to prevent tyre overheating. But while this might be part of the solution, it probably doesn't fully explain McLaren's advantage. As Christian Horner said, it's hard to get such cooling performance only with air. So, what's the real secret? Well, it could be something much more innovative. But before I tell you about that, let me tell you about something I'm really proud of. If you're aiming for a career in motorsport or just want to go deeper into how race cars really work, we've built something for you. For nearly a year now, my team and I have been working with Formula One experts to create a new kind of motorsport education. These are full courses, each focused on a specific discipline. Aerodynamics, design, race engineering, vehicle dynamics, race strategy and more and they're taught by people who've actually done it, inside F1 teams, under pressure, for real. It's not just textbook theory, it's the knowledge they wish they'd had starting out. The first course, 
Aerodynamics launches in just under a month with F1 legend Willem Toit. So if you want to be updated about any of these courses, join the waitlist with the link in the description below. Okay, now back to that innovation. It's something called phase change materials. But what on earth are they? Well, they're special materials that absorb or release large amounts of thermal energy heat when they change states, so like from a solid to a liquid, all while maintaining a constant temperature. So if materials don't change their phase, they just keep on getting hotter and hotter. But if you're reaching, for example, the melting point of one material, they need to absorb a lot of heat for the melting process, which means they keep the same melting temperature for longer and you absorb a lot of heat. So basically, these materials are like magic temperature sponges. When they start to melt, they soak up heat without getting any hotter themselves. Think of an ice cube in a drink. It absorbs heat from your drink, but stays at exactly zero degrees Celsius until it's completely melted. McLaren could use materials that melt at a higher temperature to keep their wheel drums at the perfect temperature for the tires, no matter how much heat is coming from the brakes. You can adjust this phase change technology or this phase change temperature by the material that you're choosing. So if you say, hey, I want to have the uh, transition temperature at 80 degree, I choose this material. If I want it at 120 degree, I choose a different material. The beauty of this solution is its simplicity. It's entirely passive, requires no electronics, actuators or water. So where exactly would McLaren place these phase change materials in their wheel assembly? One of the most important surfaces here is the, the drum surface. Um, because this is the one closest to the rim of the car. So it would make sense, or that would be my idea if I would be the engineer here, um, to include this phase change material on the inner side of the drum surface. And this makes perfect sense. The drum surface is closest to the wheel rim, which directly affects tire temperature. By lining the inner surface of the wheel drum with phase change material, McLaren could create a buffer zone that prevents too much heat from the brakes reaching the tires. And what's interesting is that this isn't new technology. Phase change materials have been used for decades in various industries, from EV batteries to home insulation to jackets. It's also used in jackets, for example. So you have little particles with phase change material in the fiber of your jacket. So um, during the day when the sun is shining at your jacket, you melt this material inside the jacket, which means that it keeps the temperature low of your jacket. So you stay cool of all you're in the sun. And then when the sun goes down in the night, uh, the material is solidifying again, ejecting that heat again and keeping you warm. So it's proven technology. McLaren has simply found a brilliant application for F1. And the advantage McLaren have might last a little while because this isn't an easy problem to solve. Selecting the perfect phase change material requires specialized chemistry knowledge and extensive testing to identify the exact transition temperatures needed for F1 tires. That's why it's not so easy for other teams to do. It's from a design point of view, it's easy to design, but you need a lot of experience to make something like this work. But there is one trade-off. By increasing or by including such phase change material in the wheel drum, you increase the unsprung weight, well, which is something that teams would happily accept if they can keep the optimal tire temperature because the advantage is bigger. So a huge thank you to Martin for sharing his expertise on this fascinating technology. If you'd like to watch his full video on this topic, please click here, or you can find his channel in the description. There are some fantastic videos over there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.